हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू ईटी गवर्नमेंट चाय पे चर्चा आई एम अर्पित गुप्ता ईटी गवर्नमेंट चाय पे चर्चा इज एन इंटरेक्टिव प्रोग्राम विद ब्यूरोक्रेट्स एंड हाई अचीवर्स फ्रॉम डाइवर्स फील्ड्स द हाई पैक्ड लाइव वीकली शो हाइलाइट्स द प्रोफेशनल जर्नी ऑफ गेस्ट देयर अचीवमेंट्स एंड अप्स एंड डाउन्स इन देयर करियर ईच वीक वी इंटरैक्ट विद अ न्यू गेस्ट डिस्कसिंग इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स टुडे आवर गेस्ट इज एन इंडियन एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सर्विस ऑफिसर ऑफ 2018 बैच फ्रॉम उत्तर प्रदेश कैडर मिस्टर विक्रमादित्य सिंह मलिक हु इज करेंटली पोस्टेड एज द joint magistrate in bijnor district of uttar pradesh welcome mr malik welcome mr malik thank you thank you mr gupta i hope i hope uh, everybody can hear us yes yes okay. so for the audience during his first posting at varanasi mr malik held the charge of chief operating officer of varanasi smart city limited and he was instrumental in executing many large scale projects in his current pro- posting in at bijnor he single handedly executed bikes of bijnor a waste to wealth public bike sharing program in visas and executed using deserted bikes of migrant labor during the first wave of covid 19 mr malik is a lawyer by qualification he did his ba llb honors from narsa university of law hyderabad he did his masters in law from oxford university uk and prior to getting into the is he practiced law at the supreme court of india and delhi high court he is a sports enthusiast who has played cricket at, at oxford university and was a high ranked tennis player during his school days and a squash player during his lawyer days i once again welcome mr malik and let's begin the conversation thank you mr gupta for the kind introduction thank you so much sir having studied law from prestigious institutes like oxford university and practiced law at the apex court that is supreme court of india you chose is public service as your career so when did your journey to become an is start and who inspired you the most over to you thank you uh so it was during my lawyer days that i realized that uh you know as a as a lawyer although you can contribute a lot towards society and towards doing good and towards high impact work uh but in india if you want to have a la- if if you want your work to have a large impact and reach the ground level uh, uh you know uh, doing it from within the system from within the government is uh it seemed like the most appropriate way of going about it and i was fortunate enough to have access to the work done uh from close quarters by uh, some is officers and s- civil servants uh my father uh, uh, it, is in the or was in the civil services my sister is also an is officer so i would constantly compare my work as a lawyer with their with the impact of their work right from when you start and i realized that uh, in terms of the nature of work uh, as a civil servant what you're doing is fire watching whereas uh, so you're preventing from things going wrong whereas as a lawyer your main work is fire fighting so you you know your role comes in once mostly once the event has already taken place unless of course as a lawyer you're involved in policy formulation or you know uh, you're giving some inputs but that happens at a much later stage and not within uh, you know the initial 5 10 years of of your career so uh, uh, seeing uh, comparing professional satisfaction with people within the family and and other civil servants around me uh wanting to do some good to do some public good wanting to work on the ground level wanting to work on the field wanting to utilize my knowledge base to make an impact a larger impact than i was already as a lawyer uh and of course uh do, from doing it within the system were factors that drove me and uh it's it's a very difficult uh question to answer that who inspired me the most uh because uh, we have we take inspiration from everybody and anybody around us who's doing good um so uh, there's I, i think uh, we don't count or give credit enough to not only civil servants but from people outside the system also who contribute towards doing good i feel that even if even if you can fast track the process in your office and cut uh, uh, cut two uh, steps and make that process a more streamlined process you're doing good and saving public time and public money so of course you know there's inspiration all around us 
but personally uh, of course i had a, a source of inspiration within uh, the family my parents were my inspiration my sister was my inspiration um, and uh, of course above everything else my mother gave me the push to keep uh, preparing and uh, you know uh, sticking at it till i cracked the exam mr malik you are currently serving as the joint magistrate in bijnor district so we would like to understand what are your priorities in your current posting as the joint magistrate so uh in up and in a couple of other states uh sdm uh, rank officers who are direct is officers are given uh, the term or the po- uh, or the uh, posting name as joint magistrate and uh, our role is you know uh, basically in a nutshell uh, administration and implementation of all government policies maintenance of law and order revenue uh, holding court uh, disaster management within our subdivision in many states uh, subdivisions and tehsils are coterminous in certain states they are not there are more tehsils and subdivisions in up a tehsil and subdivision is coterminous so i hold for example i am the sdm or joint magistrate of bijnor sadar which is bijnor headquarters and uh, my primary role is uh, you know all administrative setup within the subdivision but of course in particular uh, maintenance of law and order of uh, holding court all revenue cases uh, all cases relating to land uh, all matters of land and uh, disaster management flood uh, plain management uh, now with the with the pandemic a, lo- a huge role in covid management whether it was uh, in uh, mitigation adaptation or now vaccination uh so i think anything and everything uh that is uh happening at the ground uh, level the sdms are responsible for executing so it's it's uh, in a nutshell policy implementation mr malik you just mentioned about covid 19 so it was uh, an unprecedented crisis but you converted this crisis into an opportunity you initiated a program uh, that is called bikes of bijnor that is a ways to wealth public uh, bike sharing program what is this program all about so uh, this was of course one of one of uh, the things that came out of covid which we were you know we were able to convert say uh, 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 i wouldn't call it a you know bikes being left by migrant labor i wouldn't call that crisis the crisis was covid and dealing with the virus as it is but uh, this was one negative effect of that and uh, we tried to convert that into a positive externality um, so uh, basically when i joined here in bijnor uh, in august last year uh, on one of my field visits uh, to a far off chauki which is on the border of haridwar in uttarakhand i saw around 250 to 300 cycles lined up and that is where i started asking you know where did these cycles come from so before that during the first wave of covid i was posted uh, as joint magistrate varanasi where i was uh, doing my district training and i was uh, sdm raja talab there and uh, what we, you know we saw a lot of huge migrant movement at that time uh, especially from delhi from uh, northern states like haryana and punjab to eastern up and bihar and a lot of uh, migrant labor who were mo- going back home came on cycles and uh, a very positive step taken by the honorable chief minister of uttar pradesh was to ensure that as soon as they enter uttar pradesh there were up roadways buses and special trains lined up to take them home and so that you know they wouldn't have to travel much so in varanasi what we did was by the time they had reached varanasi you know they had already traveled so much we used to line up these cycles tie them on the on the top of uh, the buses and send them with them but what was done here since bijnor is north west of up and it wasn't possible because uh, it was more of special trains that were organized uh, we noted down their numbers and you know their details aadhar card details and we made a list of you know who's left which cycle and uh, then people were all the migrant labor they were sent home through uh, special trains so when i joined luckily my predecessor had that list and uh, but we didn't know what to do and i got a random call from somebody from a from you know a labor uh, labor in shravasti saying saab hamari cycles ka kya hoga and that is when you know uh, we we thought of making this plan that then district magistrate uh, ramakant pandey sir i discussed this plan with him 
and he was very very forthcoming very encouraging uh, he welcomed the idea and gave me all support that was required so what we did was we took these cycles we made a pilot project of 100 cycles we took them we made 10 stands within the city cycle bike stands and we chose these 10 stands on the basis of most traffic movement for example roadways choraha collectorate tehsil zila hospital bijnor club you know uh, other areas sadar bazar nagar palika choraha where a lot of people take public transport or entry points of the city you know people come from rural areas and they take autos or say they walk and we we placed our uh, cycle stands at such places we put 10 10 cycles in each place and we um, of course uh, we had to these cycles were in dilapidated conditions um, they were all you know submerged in water when i saw them they were rusted they had to be re you know renovated redeveloped so uh, one good thing that came out of this was that we engaged local laborers from the market who are, you know who open their roadside cy- cycle stands and they got uh, so four of such uh, uh, mistries got business worth 90000 rupees of renovating these cycles within a span of say 10 days to weeks they worked overnight and they did this for us so this is especially coming out of covid you know when business was hit so badly it was a, a good sort of uh, employment work for them also then we got similar mistries to make those stands for us we got painters local painters to you know design we designed a logo and uh, we did that branding we all that branding was done through local uh, painters on the walls across the city we got local people to make banners which showed a map of uh, bijnor city and you know indicated which which uh, 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 cycle stand is at which place on the map and how we uh, arranged it was that we kept 10 stand managers now uh, it's important to note that these 10 stand managers were also tapri walas they were people who were selling pakoras or you know chai uh, on the road side and uh, not only had we covered them under the pm swanidhi yojana which is you know the latest uh, uh, scheme of the honorable prime minister and executed by the honorable chief minister in up which is you know you give them give uh, 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 feri walas 10000 rupees loan Uh, to further their business especially those people who were hit during business uh, during covid but we also gave them the responsibility of maintenance of these stands and uh, so what we did was that we we had a very simple rate structure um, you know a public bike sharing program as you see in delhi or other states uh, other cities like hyderabad surat vijayawada you know they they are based on gps maps automated card payments so something like that i thought bijnor city was not really ready for it and more importantly since they were these bikes were waste to wealth renovated cycles this the typical atlas cycle that you find that laborers use uh, we didn't want to make it so high tech we wanted to make it more workable on the ground um, so uh, what we did was that we put forth a scheme of a rent of only 5 rupees for the first 4 hours and 10 rupees for the entire day 12 hours and we told the stand managers who are these tapri walas that the entire money is yours all you have to do is maintain these uh, cycles and cycle stands so clean them and you know upkeep of their whether it's the hawa or any tire puncture or something you have to do this the entire money otherwise is yours and uh, just make sure that you know people uh, uh, you know are are using it and it is being used for public good and we painted them bright yellow we kept a neutral color so that you know people don't even there's there hardly any thefts nothing like that happens and i was happy to note although we launched this on 16th of uh, march um, uh, 2021 and then soon the second wave of covid came so it was hit by that but as soon as the second wave ended we saw uh, traction and we saw people using it so even right now when i'm going on my field visits i see many times you know if if nobody else all all our safai karmis of nagar palika all our uh, you know other laborers they use these cycles a lot in fact a lot of people called me you know that uh, they had to, somebody had to go from tehsil which is one area of the city to the other area of the city which is traffic congested area and then take a bus so they use this cycle to go from one end to the other and then take a bus from there so it is gaining traction uh, day by day it is being used some stands are being used more than the others 
but um, ultimately uh, people are using them and some some public good came out of it so uh, i guess uh, we we are also figuring out how to make this more sustainable in the future and maybe keep it working once the current people who are posted also go Uh, uh so i did uh, once this was put on social media and twitter uh, uh yulu bikes and other couple of uh, people have offered us free apps for this system and you know when the system is ready we'll definitely engage with them so it's been and somebody from delhi green uh bicycle system they they've approached us for a free app so it is gaining traction people are accepting it and it's it's something that you know a, a positive that came out of a not so positive situation but i must appreciate the idea and the execution part because most of these smart cities still do not have public bike sharing uh, program is still launched in their smart cities though ministry is laying emphasis on uh, promoting green transport and public bike sharing program so moving next uh, mr malik i would also like to know uh, your experience as a chief operating officer of varanasi smart city limited please tell us about some of innovative steps that you had undertaken as uh, Uh, CEO of VSCL as your past assignment. Right. right. Uh, so it's been it's been over one and a half years, and I'm going to try and recall this. Uh, but basically, Varanasi, uh, as you saw in the last couple of days, also has uh, a lot of attention of all good projects that are happening. And uh, there's a huge, there's a very uh, you know experienced and big, large team that is working on the ground. uh led by uh, divisional commissioner varanasi the district magistrate the then dm surin singh sir and the subsequent dm kaushal raj sharma sir the municipal commission then municipal commissioner gorang rathi sir and uh, the current municipal commissioner uh, so basically when i was in varanasi i was under training but um, i was fortunate enough uh, commissioner sir gave me this charge of a uh, chief operating officer not only was it a learning experience for me but i was able to contribute towards uh, trying to make kashi a smart city and uh, there were a few projects that we undertook from scratch uh, one or two projects i uh, i uh, i can uh, take credit of uh, having convinced the senior officers of trying to execute this although of course a kashi integrated car- command and control center had been set up before uh we joined it was by our predecessors but we tried to streamline it by making the solid waste management system more full proof by making it more tech based similarly our environmental uh, systems like aqi reading traffic diversions based on aqis traffic diversions based on uh you know smart cameras giving us the input uh, on where the traffic is more and where it is less having Uh, uh variable message sign boards rerouting that traffic giving important messages having a good public address system but a couple of projects which you know um uh, which were close to my heart when i was at varanasi were uh, one uh, i saw that you know like we have say in at the imam bada in uh, lucknow or we have uh, at the taj mahal there wasn't any proper signage system at uh, at the ghats of varanasi so uh, we tried to recreate the contour of uh, the ghats of varanasi on cotton steel and put it on the two ends with a proper information system with the significance of those ghats not only that we tried to have a uniform signage we tried to have of all the ghats including you know some uh, steps like you know on the steps we tried having some nice uh, modern uh, yet ancient uh, you know infusion wala signage systems so those were something that you know we sat and designed uh, we sat with uh, the uh, the uh, the team who got the tender and we designed them and uh, with good lighting system and uh, i think it was inaugurated the last time uh, the honorable prime minister went there and uh, from what i hear it has been uh, received well of course the ghats come with a lot of challenges there's flooding for three Uh, months in a year, or at least two two and a half months in a year in Varanasi, and you know the entire the ghats up to uh, at least three four feet up to the walls are inundated in water. So whatever interventions we make over there have to be waterproof and have to sort of withstand that that onset of the monsoon and flooding. So that makes it more challenging. Another project which uh, now, in fact, when the Honorable Prime Minister went uh, a couple of days ago to inaugurate the Kashi Vishnath Mandir Dam, uh, you you could have seen on on television was the new uh, formed Khidkia Ghat. So this Khidkia Ghat uh, was not one of the initial 84 Ghats. 
uh, it was a ghat beyond uh, the railway line the the bridge that connects to chandoli and it was not developed at that time so uh, i i was fortunate enough to contribute towards designing of uh, this khidkiya ghat and it's come up as a very modern uh, yet uh, with ancient outlook uh, ghat um, with all the features provision for a ganga aarti provision for commencement of uh, you know that uh, uh, the cruise that happens in uh, as a starting point of that cruise the roro boats and um, it it's got it's got a mandir on one side which is also being developed so that khidkiya ghat has come out uh, as a beautiful ghat and uh, there were a lot of other interventions like redevelopment of six wards of kashi so the oldest six wards of kashi uh, the entire so you know when you would walk towards the mandir you would see across those really narrow by lanes and you would see that you know all uh, electrical lines all other fittings were all exposed so um, what we did was we decided in the, because the mandir complex was being developed in such a beautiful way by the kashi vishna trust we decided that in the six uh, wards uh, abutting the mandir uh, which were the oldest we uh, sort of put in all the utilities underground and we replaced um, uh, the flooring of, of the entire ward uh, uh, we put uniform uh, old sandstones which we got you know which gave that feel of the old architecture of banaras and and we we sort of Uh, plan to color, uh, you know, not uh, color is not the right term, but uh, beautify the walls uh, that there were. So this entire designing and tender uh, work was happening happened while I was there, but the execution it was beautifully executed by uh, the municipal commissioner Gorang Rathi sir. And uh, from what I hear, people have really received it well. So these are a couple of uh, projects that we could work on. I was fortunate enough to work on, and of course, you know, these are uh, uh, projects which have a long gestation period, and there are many, many. It's a huge team. It's always a team effort, and uh, led by the most able uh, uh, divisional commissioner, district magistrate, a municipal commissioner. And I was, I was fortunate enough to learn and work in this process. This great work, uh, definitely, I can say, is an example of. Uh, excellent team work and kashi today is an ideal example of amalgamation of india's rich tradition and modernity which i think every smart city of the country should aspire for uh, mr malik i would also like to know uh, a lot of new and emerging technologies are being introduced in the governance system today how do you see technologies transforming the governance so um, i think uh, it's it's a very difficult question i think uh, with the use of uh, use of technology is a, is a, is a must is an absolute must in governance today uh, not only does it you know reduce uh, time and effort it reduces uh, the waiting period it it improves governance it fast tracks governance it it brings governance on one platform so there are numerous advantages of uh, tech using uh, you know advancing technology in governance and I, i don't think we can stress on it enough but my personal opinion is that uh, there needs to be a, a right balance between um, uh, physical application of mind and use of technology i think wherever technology is used to uh, reduce unnecessary discretion in governance uh of or or reduce human uh discretion in the in the right manner uh, i think uh, that is uh, an absolute must uh now we are not only talking about technology we are talking about artificial intelligence we are talking about blockchain technology and use of that in governance and we have advanced courses we have people training us and using algorithms to to influence decision making uh which is of course the need of the hour but for example you know i'll i'll start with say a 2008 9 setup say when the mca 21 was brought in and, and and the process of opening up a company was reduced from you know uh, a, a couple of months in india to say about one day or 24 hours or 48 hours uh, uh, under uh, the aegis of the ministry of corporate affairs from there we have moved to a setup where you know now in revenue administration i see as an stm all our maps are being digitized uh, uh, under the new swamitva scheme we have gharonis being distributed which are property cards for for um, uh, you know uh, abadi uh, laden areas and we are using drone uh, technology to capture 
uh, all of that. So of course uh, it is uh, it is the need of the art. Uh, but my uh, opinion is personal opinion is that we need to have the right mix. Uh, we need to have uh, technology. We need to have people guide technology and not technology guide us. Uh, at least as of now. And uh, I think wherever it is used to reduce time, to reduce unnecessary human discretion, where uh, stuff which can be done even without uh, uh, due application of mind, for example, applic you know, providing a, a citizen uh, interface for their services. For example, in UP, we have our basic systems like, you know, now we are going for elections. So we have people applying for their Epic cards, uh, filling on uh, Form 6 online. Everything is processed online. They don't have to visit the tehsils. So stuff like that, technology is a must and it's it's absolutely required. Uh, but places where technology may get out of hand or, or till we have the right security set up uh, uh, to ensure that things don't get out of hand, uh, we need to still sort of hold on to it uh, uh, with some sort of human intervention. So I think the right balance is is the right uh, uh, need of the art. Yes, I think overdose of technology may be disastrous as well. Uh, Mr. Malik, uh, one of the schemes of UP government, that is one district, one product is gaining popularity all across the country and world over. Yes. How is your district, Bijnor, is performing in ODOP? And how the artisans and uh, handicrafts, you know, they are uh, gaining momentum. Right. So uh, this signature ODOP product of um, Bijnor is wooden work, wooden handicrafts. And uh, we have a huge handicraft industry in Nagina in Bijnor. And uh, in fact, uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, people who manufacture and straight away export. And uh, they're beautiful products like, you know, wall clocks, uh, their glasses, mugs, uh, other utilities, small chests, name plates, uh, a lot of, you know, other small uh, artifacts. Uh, and it's, uh, it's uh, you know, not only are we, we trying to promote it at all government uh, events and, uh, you know, through, uh, say, the political uh, class, the executive, uh, the Honorable Chief Minister uh, really is promoting these products and we have various ghat, uh, you know, uh, uh, events organized in Lucknow and for that we send our teams, we send the artisans, we send our, you know, uh, factory owners to Lucknow and other places, say, at Delhi. So I think uh, Bijnor has its signature product in, in terms of wood because there is a good wooden industry in Bijnor and it, it's a wood industry in Bijnor and it's it's uh, become uh, uh, not only uh, within the state, within the division, but uh, it has a nationwide appeal now. There are some orders which come even from Central India, from South India that, that these people are catering to. So we try and provide a platform to them wherever we can. Another thing that, you know, I've been trying to do of late, but uh, we haven't been so successful only in terms of the nature of transport that is required is, and especially in my area, we have a lot of Muda production, you know, uh, Muda's uh, that are used through, uh, uh, so since we are on the flood plains of uh, uh, Ganga, uh, Ganga River, there is a lot of uh, that plant which, which gives that uh, rassi from which the Muda is made. And a lot of that is made. The only shortcoming is that the price of each muda is uh, much lesser than, and, and it's it's a, it's uh, quite a lot of space that is required to transport it. And uh, the cost of uh, the muras is much lesser than the cost of transportation. So the economy is not really working. We try and we try and promote this industry here in Bijnor whenever we have any government events. We have pradarshinis in all government events, uh, in all, uh, you know, uh, setups by the Vikas Bhavan uh, under uh, the chief development officer. But uh, this is something that we're not being able to push at the national level yet. But we're going to try and find a way out uh, for this. But yes, of course, when it comes to our ODOP signature product, which is wooden handicrafts, they have achieved that, that level uh, uh, till now. And we're trying to push it further. Mr. Malik, every day in uh, public service or you can say civil services is a, comes with a new challenge. So what has been your most challenging assignment or day so far in your service? 
It's a very, very uh-huh. difficult question because uh, somebody, you know, uh, I keep getting asked this question that you uh, moved back from Oxford first. First, you moved back from Oxford to the country and now you're in, in this remote, completely rural district of Bijnor. And uh, how does it feel? And my standard answer is that, you know, uh, uh, there is uh, such lack of monotony that every day in the morning there is a new challenge that comes up. Whether it is with law and order, whether it is, you know, uh, service provision, whatever it may be. Uh, But if you're talking about, you know, uh, off the top of my head, the toughest challenge that I've faced in my three and a half plus years of service till now was the second wave of uh, the coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic that we had. And uh, uh, during the second wave where everybody was down, where resources uh, were, did, were not matching the requirement uh, to keep health services on oxygen supply, on uh, provision of beds, provision of healthcare to everybody uh, who was COVID infected was a big, big challenge. And um, uh, at that point, uh, uh, my uh, district magistrate, DM sir, Mr. Pandey, had entrusted a lot of responsibility of me uh, on me for oxygen management, for looking after the district hospital, for for you know upgrading our CHCs and uh, that is where I must you know mention on this platform uh, so good use of social media I'm trying to give an example of good use of social media so we often see you know how or we often hear how uh, officers have to strike the right balance in terms of use of social media and through this platform I just want to give an example I used to stay away from social media uh quite uh you know just have a low sort of low-key uh setup where i wouldn't really post much and i wouldn't engage much but it was during this second wave that i realized how important social media is i'll give two examples the first was that when bikes of Bijnor took off uh, somehow it gained traction on social media that is where even i shared a bit and a, a lot of uh some important people also shared it and it was during the second wave that you know somebody had seen this video on bikes of bikes of Bijnor on Twitter, and a couple of these organizations during the second wave who were trying to make, you know, who had the money but who needed the right people to put resources in the right place in rural areas, and who wanted to send help to the absolute grassroots level but didn't know how to. So they approached me. I was approached by, you know, they had just seen my video on bikes of Bijnor, and somehow they had trust that okay, this the team in Bijnor is good. And if we approach them, you know, they've done some good work in one sphere. So if we approach them here, we'll be able, we have, we are confident that we'll, you know, this, this team will ensure that the work we want to do, they will execute for us. So three such international organizations, like people from Delhi, people who are pooling in resources, they got in touch with me through Twitter and uh, they sent us oxygen concentrators, BiPAP machines, oxygen cylinders. They just, it was all trust-based. And it was only because they had seen some good work on bikes of Bijnor. And things didn't end here. There's this one company in Bombay, which is, I think, an international company that has a setup in uh, in India. And it's a listed company. Uh, a high-ranking official from there, they donated 25 lakhs to have an oxygen plant in a CHC in Bijnor. And this connect happened only because they had seen, uh, they had seen the bikes of Bijnor video. So, you know, uh, this convinced me that uh, use of social media in the right way is very important for governance. And uh, if, if as long as as long as long uh, public good is coming out of that connect, um, you know, it, it is a must. And the other thing I want to say is that, you know, I myself was COVID infected and I was in quarantine during that second wave. And uh, although I was, you know, constantly on the phone trying to you know, ensure oxygen supply, coordinating with other senior officers in neighboring districts uh, because we did not have an oxygen plant. We only had a storage tank. And uh, so I was trying to streamline that. Uh, But during that process, uh, Commissioner Muradabad, who looks at after our division, he had a social media presence and I had just started to have a social media uh, presence after our bike service in our account. People would approach us on Twitter and we were able to resolve their problems on Twitter. So, you know, we used it effectively in a way that, you know, people got uh, some benefit out of it and we were trying, we were were able to help uh, uh, people during that pandemic. 
so uh, i think that was you know unprecedented times it was a very challenging time that we saw and i was uh, you know i'm still very very junior in the service and still not as experienced as say other senior officers but it was a huge learning experience and uh, i think we came out strong i think i, I think uh, uh, uttar pradesh team up did a, a reasonably good job led by uh, you know the right team in lucknow and of course uh, the chief minister of lucknow and uh, i think uh, in the end people were satisfied that you know we put our best foot forward uh, mr malik let me ask uh, you one very important and pertinent question that every bureaucrat come across in his life uh, and his service uh, though you have spent uh, more than 3 years uh, but you must have come across such situation you have your uh, uh, is bosses your bureaucratic bosses in the system but at the same time you also have pressure from political guys political people uh, leaders so how to make a balance between your bosses and the pressure coming from political leaders any such situation you came across in past 3 years so you know uh, i think maybe this differs from place to place from states to state to state uh but to be very honest uh, i in my uh, one year and three months in varanasi and uh, uh, you know almost one and a half years in bijnor now i have not still come to such a situation where you know things are at such loggerheads that there is no uh, uh, you know workable solution out of it i think uh, uh, of course maybe things may uh, you know uh, many people have their own personal experiences and i'm not negating the importance of such uh, you know situations i'm just saying that i uh, haven't yet been in a situation where things were were uh, you know i was at such loggerheads with somebody that you cannot make the other person understand so of course i have been in situations where not everything um can be done the way it is being asked to be done of course everybody faces that situation every day but uh, i think with the right intention if you explain it with a lot of patience with with you know if if you equip equip yourself with knowledge and you uh, tell your political bosses or political representatives that you know sir this is the rule this is the situation this is where public good lies ultimately they also want public good they uh, you know i think the the uh, nature of politics uh, over the last 10 years or maybe you know uh, maybe what since at least i have seen has changed from now you know blind politics to uh, i think politics uh, has moved there has been a paradigm shift where people also realize that ultimately if you do good it's going to result in a you know it's better for the long term so i think uh, whenever there have been situations where you know something could not be done and i explained uh, to the political representative that this is the rule and this is where public interest lies and this is you know this is my limitation they have mostly understood it there's never been a problem you know where or or we have tried to you know come to a, 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 a you know a, a sort of a, a workable solution where the rules were not violated and uh, on the ground things were implemented without stalling the work so i think uh, i think there has been a shift both from our side and from the political side also that ultimately code has to be done because i think uh, the voter also is a very literate voter in our country now and and people realize that you cannot blindly do something wrong um so if you explain public good and you explain the rules uh, people mostly understand it that's been my experience i i hope this is how it continues and uh, i hope both uh, you know both sides have enough patience to understand what is what is right and what is wrong and uh, you know proceed in that manner and i'm confident that everybody is on the same page right uh, mr malik uh, you are a sports enthusiast would you like to share your achievements in cricket tennis and squash how has been your sports journey <laughs> i wouldn't really call them achievements uh, but i've uh, so i've just uh, since childhood i used to play a lot of sport i, I you know i, I played cricket uh, right from school to uh, senior level and i used to i, I was a ranked uh, uh, tennis player and uh, of course in college also we used to play both cricket and tennis and at oxford i was playing cricket and uh, for my law firm we used to play cricket and and now i'm fortunate enough to be in the in the team of uh, in the up team tennis team 
which represents uh, UP at the National Civil Services Tournament, and we try and play cricket also. So um, uh, during my preparation days and lawyer days, since you know it was difficult in Delhi to uh, find always find a, a tennis partner or you know a team to play cricket, I picked up squash. And uh, I found myself after a year or so having a rank in squash also. Uh, so these are the three sports that I've played at various levels, uh, college, university, uh, some at state, some at national. So uh, it's just a passion that I have. Even here in Varanasi, uh, we had a couple of officers also and the culture was such that we used to try and get a game on Sundays if there was time. Uh, in Bijnor, uh, we haven't been able to do so much cricket, but we try at least one Sunday in two, three weeks, you know, where we try to have a match. If not that, then, you know, we try to play tennis or badminton, try to make uh, the best use of whatever facilities are wherever we are posted. So, uh, uh, yeah, that that's about it. Just, just passionate about sport. I follow it and I play it. And uh, sometimes you're fortunate to be... Uh, you know, in a place where uh, other like-minded people also uh, play the sport and you can sort of not only enjoy it, but encourage it. And now, you know, I I, I must say uh, in Bijnor, there is a very healthy uh, sporting culture, you know, when it comes to Kabaddi, when it comes to athletics, when it comes to shooting. So uh, one good step uh, that has come in this, in this, uh, in the, in the recent six months in this government is a positive step of this government is, uh, you know, taking uh, sport, promoting sport infrastructure right till the grassroots. So n we till now we used to have a district level uh, sports uh, committee, sports promotion committee. It's called other things in other districts, but now we have a Tessil task force also where we're given certain fund and there's a society and there's a committee that promotes uh, sports people. So we're trying to promote shooters or young kids, you know, 10, 11 year olds. Ke chalo, if nothing else, if you're going for a tournament, we'll fund your tickets to, you know, going and coming, give some scholarships or give prize money. So uh, this is something, you know, if you have the inclination, if you've been a sports person yourself, you try and promote uh, wherever you're posted as well. And and uh, I think uh, uh, recently the DM of Noida Sohas, sir, uh, won the, you know, he won silver at the Paralympics. Ever since, uh, you know, the culture within the services is also, in, in, you know, improving and increasing. And I think uh, we have uh, the current setup from Lucknow also, we have been... Uh, you know, given directions to promote sport, it not only promotes, uh, you know, personality building, but team building and, you know, a lot of positive externalities. So we're trying to do it wherever we are. Let me ask you a couple of personal questions. What keeps you busy, Mr. Malik, when you are not at work? Uh, as I said, uh, in the evenings or early mornings, I usually either try and go for a run or, get, or play some sport. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, there haven't been uh, as, you know, there is enough time to enjoy a game or, uh, you know, just uh, enjoy a run or say on the weekends if, so I'm very fortunate, uh, my subdivision is right on the banks of the Ganga River and uh, Bijnor is where Gangaji enters UP for the first time from Haridwar. So the, uh, the, the quality of the water, Gangaji is very clean, as clean as, you know, we have Gangetic dolphins here. So uh, there are times uh, when we can mix work with pleasure and, you know, visit the banks also and see uh, wildlife. We have a manga tiger reserve in Bijnor, uh, which is the part of Corbett, which came within UP. Uh, so uh, that also falls in Bijnor district. So say once in a couple of months, we can go to the forest or something like that. But other than that, I think uh, just because of COVID and because of, you know, earlier COVID management and mitigation, and then now vaccination and now with the elections coming up, there is not that much time that we get, but we try to make uh, the best of whatever time we get. And of course, having family over, uh, I very recently got married. So uh, there is there is another person to look uh, forward to when I go home. So I think uh, these things keep us busy. Any uh, moment, any achievement or any award prize, anything that a moment that you will always cherish for? Um, so I think uh, it, there, I, I don't remember, you know, of course, as uh, when we went Varanasi, we won a couple of awards in Delhi and all of that. Of course, that's all team effort. But uh, I think uh, 
in bijnor uh, when people come up to your office and they say that you know we've heard this and this about you and we know that we'll get justice from you uh, they repose a lot of faith they're coming from far off distances and uh, when uh, you know to to hear that some positive word has traveled enough that somebody would travel from that far and tell you that you know we know that uh, you are trying in all honesty to uh, help uh, people i think that is uh, uh, you know that that gives a lot of satisfaction and and that uh, not only increases the amount of responsibility we have and we try to work harder but it also when you go home it makes you feel nice that people have faith in you and people have faith in the system and uh, the system is still working and and hopefully the ias and other civil services still the steel frame of the governance setup uh, mr malik there are a lot of uh, young people those who want to join uh, civil services or want to become ias or ips ifs officers any message for them any uh, suggestions for them from your side yeah i just want to say that uh, even if you know there is uh, Uh, and i out of feeling left in your heart that you this is what you want to do keep keep going at it and don't give up uh, your turn will come but do it with all honesty and uh, i just want to say do it for the right reasons uh, join the civil services uh, for the right reasons uh, which is to do public good uh, ultimately you know uh, what we want in life uh, it, is sort of a never ending list first you know we want to make it uh to the services then we want a particular rank then we want a particular there are things that we can do we want a particular cadre then we want a particular side of the state so i'm just saying that you know do it for the right reasons and uh try and give in your best and if 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 you want to do public good if you genuinely want to make a dif- difference this is the place to be uh, at the moment and uh, you know there is a lot of uh responsibility and uh, uh, res- uh public faith uh, that is vested in this setup uh, so uh, try and do justice to it we all try and do justice to it sometimes we succeed sometimes we fail uh, but uh, you know if, if you if you're doing uh, proceeding on the path with the right intentions uh, you know the path is going to be yours and of course joining the civil services is is not an end it's a process towards it's it's a means to an end and the end is public good so your life actually starts uh, you know when we are preparing we think ki bas ek bar exam ho gaya to then you know life is set but actually that is where it start the process starts and uh, once you get started you you forget that struggle and in day in day out you know when i sometimes when i feel acha mai i've been in a, a rural posting for the last one and a half years i remember my struggling days i go back to rajinder nagar and i think you know yaad hai yahan pe khade ho ke sochte the ki yaar ek bar bas rank list mein naam aa jaye kisi tarah so my point is uh, try and do it for the right reasons try and uh, do it with all honesty and uh, uh, as long as there is fire in the belly and uh, there is uh, you know uh, d- uh, you know you you appreciate that devil lies in the detail uh, you will work hard and the harder you work the luckier you get uh, uh, so there is no no substitute to hard work just just keep at it mr malik before we wrap up the discussion for today let me ask you one last question going forward what are your immediate priorities and anything any dream that you have uh, seen you know after joining the services that is left i am not sure if i want to answer the second question also i haven't i, I it's something i will have to think through uh, but uh, priorities uh, certainly so you know uh, your outlook can be uh, long term and short term right so uh, i always uh, you know why we are often asked this question in upsc interviewers also you know what is your priority going to be when you join the services and and rightly so a lot of people say you know who somebody who has inclination towards education will say education somebody would say strengthening the health infrastructure somebody would say uh, you know uh, infrastructure or projects or you know various fields that you have inclination towards Uh, that is of course a long term uh, sort of a goal that you have uh, or long term priority that you may have uh, but i think that doing the small things right i think uh, whatever responsibility you are given uh, like currently uh, honestly i'm only thinking of 
at the current posting knowing that you know we have this due in the next 2 3 months and this is what we have to do and as i said at the start of my interview that even if we can uh, fast track our file movement system by two steps in one day we have achieved something we have added we have contributed towards the process we have contributed we have reduced the waiting time for people It, even if you know we these small interventions uh, that we're doing towards improving governance are things that are going to ultimately make the difference so i think um, instead of you know long term priorities what i'm going to say is Uh, uh wherever you're posted at that time whatever is the need of the hour uh, that is something that should be a priority for example right now a vaccination is the need of the hour so that is something that my uh, my current dm monitors every day in the morning and all sdms uh, you know they have to ensure maximum vaccination and we're trying to uh, push our district towards uh, fully vaccinated status and uh, similarly you know we have elections coming up so uh, doing that right as ro's uh, before that we had you know uh, we had a kisan movement so we uh, you know trying to address law and order issues trying to balance uh, the rights with the wrongs or uh, you know trying to uh, sort of do justice to whatever you have at hand is is a priority i would say thank you so much mr vikramaditya singh malik it was really a great interaction with you you have candidly answered all our questions our sincere thanks to you for accepting our invitation and making today's show wonderful we wish you, you all the best for your future endeavors Thank you so much. The pleasure has been all mine, and uh, all the best for all your subsequent shows. And uh, it was uh, really nice to have this chat with you. Thank you, Mr. Gupta, and thank you to ET Government. Thanks a lot. Right.